Hey y'all, Chelsea and Danny here. Enjoy this episode of Today's Homeowner here on YouTube. Today's Homeowner with Danny Lipford. Real projects for real homeowners with real solutions. Information and inspiration on improving your home from professional remodeler Danny Lipford. Well, I'm glad you're with us this week. Now, the owners of this home are like a lot of homeowners. They love to entertain, especially when the weather's nice and they can use their 16 by 32 foot wood deck. Now, they realized they could get a lot more use out of this deck if it had a roof covering and walls of screen. That's the project we're working on this week. And it'll include a vaulted ceiling with a wood ceiling as well as two skylights that'll help shed some natural light into the adjacent rooms. Also, we'll show you how we're taking the existing weathered wood deck and completely revitalizing it so it'll look real nice inside the new screen porch. Also, the owner wanted to make sure he was able to maintain his grill right on the deck itself. We'll leave it in place and put an exhaust fan above it that'll allow the homeowner to keep the grill hot, rain or shine. Stay with us. Now the first step on this project was to remove all of the existing wood handrails. After that, we remove the existing stairs that we'll reposition in the center of this wall a little bit later. And one of the first things we had to deal with is to really add a little extra support on the outside of the existing deck to support our walls as well as our roof. So the way we accomplished that is using a two by eight treated that we wrapped around the existing framing of the deck. Then we came back and extended the boards here that are two by six treated out under where we're to build the new walls. Now the new walls, the way I like to build these on a screen porch is to put a four by four post in the corner, then come over 32 inches, which is a standard width for screen. Now because of the 32 inch width here, we had to supply a little more support here with the two by eight beam running the length of the wall. With the horizontal support here and horizontal support there, we don't have to worry about the support that's needed for the roof. Now, when you're picking wood like this, you probably want to go to the lumber yard and hand pick it yourself. Because of it being exposed throughout the project, you'll want to make sure that there's no excessive bark or chafing on any of the wood itself. That'll make a big difference once you get it all painted out and the, the porch is completely finished. After the wall is up, of course, they're well underway on putting the roof rafters in. They're two by eights, 16 inch centers, except where we have our skylights going in and we're out to about 22 inches there. Now, all of the rafters are supported on a pony wall, a short wall that was built using short two by fours and a double top plate. Now they'll continue installing the rafters all the way across this area, then it'll tie right in to the existing roof and form a valley that'll start down at the bottom and run right through these two skylights. So the two skylights will have to be removed, the deck replaced in that particular area and the drywall installed a little bit later in the job. Now that'll create a nice valley, it'll take care of all of the water, but before they got to this point, of course, they built the pony wall, as I'd mentioned before, but they also cut a 12-inch slot in the existing roof. This will allow the attic ventilation to circulate like it should and prevent any chance of any little hot pocket that could form in here if you trap that air, as we've avoided doing by cutting that trench. Now, of course, it looks like the guys are getting pretty serious about this roof framing, so we'll let them at it. It's taken a little over a day to get to this point on the roof. They have most of their rafters in place and most of the plywood deckings complete. Now what they're working on now is basically a few little things that have to be done before the roofers make it out on the job. Now Dennis is in the process of finishing up the closing off of the skylights we talked about earlier. One skylight was there, another there. We're decking over it, then he'll put the black builder's felt over it, and then they'll be ready for our carpenters to take the rafters right on over, deck it out, and we'll definitely be ready for the roofers in. 
Now, a few other things that are taking place right here is where one of the skylights will be. They've cut out the plywood earlier, then framed it with a two by four. And now Mike's in the process of putting just some felt flashing around it, again, in preparation of the roofer that'll be here tomorrow. Now, around the fireplace that we built around, of course, they've also put the felt. The roofer, in the process of putting the roof on, will flash all of that. But this is a real critical aspect of any roof, particularly if you have a fireplace. This is a cricket roof or a diverter roof, so that when the water is coming down in this direction, it'll go off in either valley direction and not hit the back of the chimney, which is a big source of a lot of leaks when you have a roof just like this. So as I said, our next step here is to install all of the building felt, and we're ready for that roof for tomorrow. Well, with the nice weather we've had over the last couple weeks, this project has really moved along. We've been able to complete all of the decking of the roof. We've had our roofing contractor out to complete the installation of the modified bitumen roof. And they had to do a little bit of shingle work along one of the valleys to tie it back in to the existing roof. Also, our carpenters have been able to complete all of the installation of the screening, the lattice strips, and the painter was even out, and he's pretty much complete with all of the painting that's needed to be done. Also, we built a brand new set of steps. We had planned on relocating the original steps that were off center to the center, but once we removed them, there was a lot of water damage, so the decision was made to go ahead with a new set of steps. Now, let me point out just a couple things that if you're about to build some steps, you need to consider. First of all, they're outside. You need some type of wood that's good and resistant to all of the elements. Here is all a pressure-treated wood. Also, in the construction of the steps themselves, you need to check with your local building codes to see what they recommend for the rise and the travel of the steps. Here, we went with 7.5 and, and 11 and a half, which is acceptable in this area, but you will need to check on that. Also, since it is outside, we used all galvanized nails that will protect these nails from any rust. Also, we added a landing up on this area. Instead of the steps coming straight up and into the screen porch, this will give you a chance to stop before you open the door and to protect you from getting that rain directly on you. Also, we extended the roof itself out, what we call a roof stoop. That'll protect you a little bit during any rain while you're going inside. Another good idea is a small concrete slab to set the wood on top of so that it's not in direct contact with the ground and it's a great place to kind of knock that dirt off your shoes before you head inside. Now when you come into the screen porch, you really get an idea of how large it is, particularly when you look at the ceiling. It starts out at 8 feet, vaulting up to about 11 feet. Also, the 1x6 V-groove pine really looks great on the ceiling, especially the way the trim carpenters trimmed out around the skylight. But the big thing that's happening on the job today is a little bit of work here on the fireplace. Now, homeowners are always looking for ways to disguise the fireplace in a porch situation or an addition, but we always suggest maybe utilizing the fireplace with a see-through fireplace design. And the chimney expert that's taking care of this is Tommy Lovell. Tommy, how in the world do you get started on something like this? Well, Danny, first of all, what we've done, we had to lay out the opening of this brick it, matching the other side for uh -huh. matching. Then once we cut this out, before I cut it out, I put a lintel in. This supports the upper brick. Okay. Okay, then once I do that, then we went into tearing out these brick, which are actually field brick. And you can see how many they put into it, stacked them in here, several, probably a couple hundred of them. Yeah, I think a lot of homeowners don't realize that a lot of that is just stacked in with really no mortar at all exactly. um, when they build the fireplace. That's why it's called field brick. I got you. It's okay. just to close it in. Okay. Then I went into the other side and we cleaned everything out of it and took a couple bricks out of it. So then we could start uh, demolition on the back side of this pulling everything out so we could build into it as far as building it into it to make it look like the other side. Okay, now will you end up putting mm -hmm. another wall up of any kind to separate the two, or will this one truly be a see-through? No, it's strictly going to be a see-through. Okay, all right. Be. Well, the first thing I think about then, what about uh, the bad guys around that can crawl through an opening like this to get inside? Well, what we're going to do, coming in with a, a two-inch lintel bar on both sides, and I'll do a solid steel door with a lock in the middle of it. Okay. It'll enhance this side of it. It's going to be real nice. Right? Okay. All right. Safety -wise. But what about um, energy efficiency? You'll still have the elements getting in. Yeah, well, the door is going to be somewhat tight, but I always suggest to the homeowner to go on the other side and put glass doors in. Okay. That makes it much more efficient. Okay. And then you've got to allow for the amount of air that would go into the chimney. Since this flue is a 1370, we'll accommodate 
that room what it was designed for, and we want to shut off as much air being pulled into it at one time. Okay. So when they're using this side, they close that door. When they're using that side, they close this door. Okay, all right. Now, in the construction of a fireplace like this, the fire brick, I know, is real, real essential. And um, for those of you that might not be familiar with fire brick, it's actually a very fire-resistant brick, usually yellow in color like this, and the entire firebox itself is encased with the fire brick. So I guess after you take all of this down, you'll be extending these areas out in order to um, catch this side right exactly. here. Exactly. What we'll do is tie in, this is the wall on the other side I'll tie in right here and bring this all the way out to it and then we'll do the bottom with the same bricks the far brick in the bottom okay. we'll tie everything together and when we get through with it it'll look straight through you'll see nothing but solid far brick on both sides of yeah. it. Well this will be kind of nice sitting out here with one of those cool evenings with a fire going there not bad at all. Definitely. Okay. Well, really you got a lot of work to do we'll okay. let you get back Thank to you. that and the next step for us is to make this ugly floor look suitable for all the nice surroundings we have. Well, we're nearing completion on our screen porch project, and you can see the homeowners have already moved a lot of their furniture out into the area they plan on using. Really looks more like a nice family room than an actual screen porch. But one of the biggest changes here has been on the deck itself. The deck was in good shape structurally, but the weather had really done a number on its appearance. The solution was a good cleaning, and we gave it one. We soaked the wood down with a cleaning solution made especially for decks, then clean the surface with a rotary brush tool. Now the device is attached to a pressure washer, so as the bristles scrub the wood, the pressurized water blasts the dirt away. Now the pressure washer alone would do a good job, but this setup really speeds the job up. Now after the deck had dried for a few days, we applied a coat of semi-transparent oil stain to both tint and protect the wood. Now covered as it is now, this should look good for a long time. Now, if you're going to try this on an uncovered deck, you'll need to recoat it at least every two years, but it'll definitely make the deck look better and make the wood last a lot longer. Now, our electricians have also been out on the jobs installing our ceiling fans and wiring all of our floor outlets and installing one of the special features of this porch, an exhaust fan. Now, the homeowners wanted to be able to continue using their gas grill, even though now their deck has a roof over it, and they didn't want that greasy buildup or any smoke filling up the porch area itself. The solution is a high volume exhaust fan. Now we have the switch conveniently located right here so that anytime the grill is being used, they can just flip the switch and that way when they're cooking those steaks, they don't have to worry about smoke filling up the porch area. Now speaking of fires, our fireplace expert, Tommy, has completed all of the removal of the old fire brick that was necessary, the reinstallation of the new fire brick, and all the tucking and pointing necessary for all the masonry cracks. Now, the special steel doors that Tommy had mentioned earlier in the show are being custom made because of the unique size and width of this particular opening. It should be ready in just a few days, then we can install it, and the fireplace will be ready to use. Now, the homeowners also have a good idea in considering putting a small hearth along here. Now, even though Tommy constructed the firebox with a small lip to keep logs from rolling out, there's always a chance a log could fall on the combustible surface of the wood floor. So, having a small hearth here may be a good idea. The owners of this home wanted to spend more time out on their deck regardless of the weather. Well, that won't be a problem now. We started out with a weathered but sturdy wood deck, built the roof covering over the deck, put up a couple walls with screen, and did a lot of work to make the floor look like it does now, and transformed this area into a tremendous porch that the homeowners will be able to use almost year round. And with a mild winter, this fireplace will take care of those chilly nights. Now it's also a fairly large area, it's 16 feet by 32 feet, so there's plenty of room for the entertaining the homeowners have planned. I hope you enjoyed this week's show. I'm Danny Lipford. We'll see you next week. It's time to pick up a few tricks of the trade from Danny and home repair expert Joe Truini in this week's Simple Solution. When you park your car or your truck on your driveway or here in your garage, you may end up with what we have here, quite an oil spill. Yeah, Danny, this is a pretty typical situation in most households, but the solution for this is a really great and easy tip. I like this one a lot. All you need is to soak up an oil spill like this is ordinary cat litter. Now, 
the reason this works on an oil spill is the same reason it works in a litter box, is that the granules are super absorbent. Right, it's not very expensive either, is no, it? No, I think a big jug like this was 5 or $6. Okay. So all you need to do is, first you need to do this as soon as you possibly can, when the oil spill is really fresh, so it hasn't had a chance to soak into the concrete. And then just pour out a nice thick layer of litter over the entire spill. Now, how long do you suggest leaving that on there, Joe? Well, I would leave it at least overnight. Oh, okay. And then to help speed up the process here, what I take is an ordinary brick or a piece of patio block like I have here and use it to grind the kitty litter down into a fine powder. And that helps it absorb much more quickly. Okay, actually just mixing it up more or less. Yep. Okay. And you can come back and turn this over with a little shovel just to get the dirty parts off from the bottom and get fresh litter down, but just leave it like that overnight and it'll soak up almost all of the oil. And I guess if it's a real bad spill, you may even have to do this twice. Yeah, right? sweep it up and do it again. Okay, all right. Well, this will work on uh, transmission fluid or brake fluid or even paint, but you may want to take your car to the mechanic and make sure you address the real problem. Now let's join Danny at the Home Center to check out this week's best new product. You know, it's a lot of fun when we're able to show you some of the new tools that are out on the market, especially the cordless tools that have become so popular. It's even more fun when we really find a bargain, and we've done that, with the Super Combo Kit from Ryobi. Now, this whole entire kit is available for less than $200, and look at some of the things you get here. First of all, a circular saw with the 18-volt battery. Of course, the blade's not on it, but it is included in the kit. Also, the 18-volt cordless drill that has the little slide-out level that Ryobi developed, as well as the little mag tray that you're able to put screws and nuts and bolts and that type of thing on there. Then, to change out the battery, you simply pull that out, and you're able to slip it right into your reciprocating saw, which works great for any of your woodworking projects, as well as maybe trimming a few of those limbs out in your yard. Now, if you need a little light on the subject, you're able to take your light from the top of the kit, put the same battery in it, and you're ready to go with the light. Also has a locking grip on it so that it can leave the light on and it can also turn it anywhere you need that light. Now, when you need the batteries charged, the charger will charge these batteries up in less than an hour. Now let's go outside for Around the Yard with Danny and lawn and garden expert Barbara Katz. You know, it's really a shame to work all summer on your yard and have a nice looking yard and still end up with a few bare spots like this. Yeah, Danny, it is a little nasty, isn't it? Sure is. There's a couple things you can do. You can just kind of level this off and get some good soil in there and just uh, probably give it some fertilizer and wait for the grass that you have to fill in the hole. Ah, that'll take too long. What about doing the same thing and maybe putting some kind of grass seed in there. Will that sure. cover it up quicker? Sure, you want to just try and get grass seed that's similar to the lawn that you have. You want to put it in there probably in the springtime or the fall. If you put it in the summer, it's really too hot for it to germinate. So it's important to do it at the early part of the summer or the late part. Water it, just don't walk on it. Well, everybody, including myself, is a little impatient. So uh, That's for sure. What about that uh, instant lawn? <laughs> Sod. Right, right. Well, sod is always a great option. Now, I mean, there are different types of sod available, and if you're going to work with sod, it's probably a good idea to take, carve out a little piece from your lawn and take it with you when you go to the shop and see what kind of sod you want to get to replace it. But once you've identified the type of sod you want to work with, it's really pretty simple. You're going to take this bare, raggedy spot and carve it out so that you've got a very regular shape, something that will be easy to fill in. Now when you get your sod, it's about two inches thick, so you're probably going to take the soil out of this square to about two inches down, take that new piece of sod, lay it in there, water it in really well, and you've got a perfect lawn.
Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Today's Homeowner. And don't forget to comment, like, and hit the bell icon so that we can notify you when new videos are posted. And don't go anywhere. Click around and continue the home improving fun.